This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm always grateful that God gives me another opportunity, another chance to just say thank you. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your faithfulness toward us. God has been better to us than we deserve. I say this every Sunday standing right here. We should never forget that he has been better to us than we've been to him. He's been better to us than we deserve. His faithfulness endures to all generations. How I many of you know that? It's just, he's been faithful. He's been faithful to us. And I'm glad to be in the house this morning, and I thank God for you. I know it's early in the morning. The good thing is, is that it's early in the morning. You will be home early. We won't stay in here all day, but we're going to come to give God glory. But we celebrate this morning that our Savior rose. He rose from the dead. He rose. Amen. Corinthians 15 tells us that if we have only hope in Christ in this life, we are all men most miserable. Paul puts forth the argument that Christ rose. And we need to know that that's why we're here today. Just to say to him, Lord, I thank you for raising Jesus Christ, amen, from the dead, amen, amen. I'm going to ask that our choir just opens us with our traditional hymn that we sing on this morning, or unless they've got something different, amen. We just sing one song, it just simply says, welcome. We want to welcome the Holy Spirit in. We know that others, I see him in the best of you are coming in, so... As they come in, let us stand all over the house. Let us bless the Lord in song. The song simply says welcome. So many areas of our life we need him to invade. And so we lift our hands, we surrender, and say, Lord, you're welcome. We want him to fill the temple with his presence this morning. And so as the choir leads us, the song simply says welcome. Welcome.
Please remain standing. Reverend Thompson is coming with that morning scripture. Uh, the morning scripture will be coming from Matthew chapter 28. Again, that's Matthew chapter 28. I'll begin reading at verse 1. At the end of the Sabbath, as it began to draw towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. The consciousness was like lightning and the raiment white as snow. And the fear of him, the keepers, did say, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you to Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. Thus I have read Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 8. You may have a blessing of the Lord's word. Amen. 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 And remain standing if you can. Elder Cawley is going to come with our morning invocation. Amen and glory to God. Let us look to the Lord. Blessed Lord our God. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah unto the risen Savior. God, we praise you and we give you glory for sending your only begotten son that we might have the right to the tree of life. Thank you for suffering where I could not suffer. Thank you for the blood shed at Calvary that I might be made clean from my sin. Thank you, God, for the plan that you put in place to redeem us back to yourself. We realize you didn't have to die, but we thank you for your plan. He didn't have to go to the cross. He could have fought it. Angels could have come down from heaven, legions of angels to rescue him, but he hung his head and died. Thank you, Jesus. And after having died, suffered and died on the cross, they laid him in a tomb that could not keep him down. Thank you for your power, Lord. Thank you for the blood, God. Thank you for the sacrifice, God. Thank you for the name, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we glorify you on today, oh Lord. We're not here for form or fashion. But we're here to give you the glory. We're here to declare that if it had not been for Jesus who was on my side, I would not be here today. We would not be here today. We thank God for all of heaven who cried, Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Oh, God, be glorified. In your infamous goodness, be glorified. For you alone, O oh Lord, you have our power in your hands. So that we are not afraid of the terrors by night, nor the arrows by day. Bless us in this place with your presence. Holy Spirit, let your anointing fall fresh in here. Fall fresh upon the speaker on today, O oh God. Give us a word, a right now word. Our daily bread, oh God, we depend on you. We love you, God. We glorify your name. We stand, oh God, in agreement that Jesus is Lord. In your holy name we pray. Every 
hands together and glorify God. For Jesus is risen from the dead. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
greatly to be praised. Come on up, Reverend Perry. Come on up, Reverend Perry. Amen. It's good to have y'all in the house this morning. God is good. He's been great. Come on. Glory to God.
where he brought me from. God has yes, been sir. good to us. Amen. Yes, sir. Glad to be here this morning. Oh. Let Reverend Thompson uh, greet you this morning. Amen. Uh, his brother's, uh, as I told you, he's a brother beloved. I thank God for him. Amen. Amen. And uh, our sister church. So come on and just say good morning to the folks. Amen. Amen. Say good morning to everyone. We are glad to be here. Amen. Amen. Is anybody glad to be here today? Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. As we worship God today, I don't know if uh, some of you know the, uh, another Brown family in Lancaster lost a loved one. And uh, this young man happened to be, his daughter happened to be my daughter's best friend. We left church. Um, and got home the other night. Uh, L.A. came in the room and she was was upset and said she had got a text from her best friend and just lost her father. And, you know, I was just standing there while she was crying and she was just holding on to me. You know, and, and you know, I, I say this and it might sound awkward, but you never know when your time going to be. And she was holding on to her father like it could have been her father. It could have been me. I say this all the time. When we look around, we come together. We don't come together in vain. We come together to worship the Lord. We don't know when it's going to be our last time. So we tell each other. We love each other. We, we put all, all that mess. We leave it outside the door. I, I say it all the time at, at New Independent. We leave it outside in the car. We leave it, out, we leave it at home. Then we get it out of our house. Yes, and you won't even bring it to church. Yes, you have your mind focused on worshiping yes, the Lord. Yes, I was telling Pastor Carly uh, when I got here that um, I apologize, but my wife and daughter's not here this morning. Uh, you know, it's the first Easter for my grandchild, grandson, and my wife couldn't help herself. She said, I'm going to Greenville. I said, well, I'm going to Pastor Carly. <laughs> I know it's going to be times where I'm going to want to go and, and be with my grandchild, but there's something pulling me towards the word today. I truly believe Pastor Kali has a word for us today. How many of y'all believe that? He didn't tell me to introduce him or anything. We're not that, at that part of the program, but he's been introducing pastors all week and preachers all week, and I just came to say a little, more, a little bit more about him. He is the senior pastor of this great church. And, and this a beloved friend, uh, when I say adopted father, adopted brother, uh, he's in between, uh, not old enough to really be my father, but he's still a father figure. And, and I said this the other week about him, uh, last, uh, the other day about him trimming the fat off this young preacher here. Uh, he, he's not ashamed to tell me when I'm wrong, but he knows the word of God. And you have to be correct when you talk to him. You've got to be correct. Uh, greater minds, like y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, he is coming with a word from heaven today. And I pray that we have ears to hear and have our spiritual eyes to see what thus says the Lord in this place today. How many of you are excited today? Amen. 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 God bless you and God love you. before the choir comes and, and then I'm going to come with the word. We're not, uh, uh, we've got, I know we've got other services, especially my minister music and the people got to go here and there. We've been in service all week and uh, I want to go ahead and get up because I do have something that I hopefully, uh, uh, that I can uh, say what God has said to me. Uh, uh, two things, that we were going to, uh, GMZ, we were going to lift our offering today uh, because this first Sunday, this is our tithe Sunday. I'm going to take a risk, hold on to it until next Sunday. Amen. Amen. And uh, I've got to keep my finance people from beating the back so long and, and wrestling with that. And secondly, secondly, I want to say 
Uh, to Reverend Thompson, I appreciate you, but my oldest son is over 50. Amen. And so. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. 
Anybody here got any Shabbat for the Lord? Not any draw for the Lord? Any pull up? Stretch out your hand. Any Barak dance before the Lord? Anybody got any shouting here? Any gratefulness? Go ahead and Shabbat the Lord here. Go ahead and pull out the Lord. Come on. Go ahead and Barak the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jesus Christ's crucifixion, uh, ministry, crucifixion, and resurrection in the Bible. It's the most poignant. It's the, it, you, you, you see the mind of God in this chapter. And so I want to I wanna read it to you. Would you go with me over to Isaiah chapter 53? I'm not going to read the whole chapter because we don't have time. I wish we had time. Um, um, Isaiah chapter 53. And I just want to read verses 1 through 5. Um, and I want to color it in a different way. When you have it, would you rest on your feet? When you have it, say amen. Amen. Who has believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that 
we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace is upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Remain standing, we're going to pray, but I, I, want, to, I want to just uh, try to preach to you for just a few moments from, from uh, the title, When Mercy Came to Town. When mercy came into town. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now. It's hard to wrestle with your word. Father, I'm in a place where I really can't say what you said to me. So use me, Father, and speak through me. Move me out of the way. And use me for your glory now. I want to do well before you. So God, I surrender to your will. Someone needs to hear from you this morning. We don't need church as usual. Someone needs to be encouraged by you this morning. Someone needs a touch from you this morning. And Father, there are those that are watching and that will see you. And I'm asking that you will cut through the airways and bless them in a mighty way. Prayer simply is this morning, Father, as always, from this sacred desk, in this sacred place, we simply say, have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray. All the children of God will say amen. amen. And amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. So last week, we celebrated what we call Holy Week. We call it uh, the Passion of Christ. It's the Passion of Christ. And as a young man, I really didn't understand because I had a world view, a secular view of what passion was. But when we talk about the Passion of Christ, it's full of pain. It means the pain of Christ. And, and so in Holy Week, we tagged it as uh, the Passion of Christ. Christ suffered. He, he came uh, to town and there was nothing uh, but a parade for him. But his whole life was full of pain. His whole life was full of struggle. And one reason his life was full of struggle and full of pain and all of this passion is that the people around him often fail to recognize who he was in the moment. And, and that, that's what I want to do before we go any further on this first day of the week as we celebrate the resurrected king. I want to stop and look at him in the moment. I want to see him as he is right now. I know that when we look at Passion Week, we see the sacrifice. We see the sacrifice that was made. Uh, we recognize that there had not been no shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. We recognize that. We also recognize that when we look at the passion of Christ, we're looking at love in action. Not just any love, but the love of God. Amen. The agape love, love without any qualification. We see the love of God in action. It is actually what we're looking at is an attribute of God. God has attributes. God is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-present God. Those are what we call non-communicable. They don't transfer. You can't be every place. You're never going to be all-powerful. You're never going to know all things. Those are God's attributes, but there are some communicable, some transferable attributes of God, like love. 
like love. You can transfer. God is love, and he allows you to love. And, and God is merciful, and you can be merciful. God is kind, and you can be kind. God is gracious, and he gives you those. You didn't make those up. Don't think that you, were, you, you, you created that thing. God transferred it to you. He gave it to you. I look at it, and I see this. I see Passion Week. And we come here to celebrate now the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yet there's still something that I don't understand. I don't understand when I look at the Lamb of God, a Lamb that has done more than any other Lamb could do. There were thousands of lambs slain, but he's done what other lambs couldn't do. I look at him and I see his passion and I don't understand why he had to die like he died. And even though we acknowledge his death and celebrate his resurrection, we fail to put any real value on his dying. We talk about it, but we don't put value on it. And when you don't put value on it, it's hard to really celebrate the resurrection. Because we don't put value on what it costs for him to get up. I need you to understand. I understand. He got up for you, but he went down because of you. And you have to understand the dying of Christ was more than him just shedding blood. Every, every pain, every suffering, every abuse was for purpose. Jesus, Jesus. And so when we look at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, the old chapter that you're convenience I need you to read it at your convenience and I would suggest that you read it from the living translation you will see that he talks about his ministry his suffering his burial and his resurrection he talks about it I don't have time I want to talk about one little piece of the text because we spend a lot of time talking about he was wounded for our transgression but we fail to put any real value in the fact because we're more concerned about the usness than the suffering of the Savior. And so we're here this morning to lift him up and to glorify him as the resurrected one but we're really not putting any real value on the reason why he had to die like he died. It was horrific. It was horrific. He had to suffer the betrayal. Why? Why did he have to pray alone and wrestle in the garden? You should ask the question why. Why did he have to be rejected by his own people? Why would they choose Barabbas over him? Why the beating? Why the crown of thorns? You have to ask, why the cross? Because he's the, God, he's the Lamb of God. All he needed to happen was to be slain. But he had to go through this. And so we come to celebrate without really having a foundational understanding of the why. I asked myself the why. I kept asking why. And I ran into two other attributes of God. I ran into grace and mercy. As I asked the question, why God, I ran into grace and mercy. And I don't know whether you know it or not. We know what grace is. We, we, we understand the grace of God. We are saved by the grace of God, not of works. Least any man should boast. It was God's grace that he poured out on us. We are saved by grace. I don't understand, I don't know if you really recognize that grace and mercy are walking partners. If grace shows up, you don't have to worry. Mercy is somewhere in the neighborhood. I ran into grace and mercy. But there, there, there's a difference now. There's a difference. They walk together, but they don't walk side by side. Mercy always walks in front of grace. When I asked the question why he had to suffer like he suffered, because mercy walks in front of grace. And when I understood that, I said, now, why does, why does mercy have to go in front of? Mercy goes in front of to establish. Come on. Psalm, Psalms 40, Psalms 40 
and 2 says that he brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my foot, feet on a rock and established my goings. Can I, can I explain what mercy is establishing? Mercy established some things. Now, Elder Carly and I, we walk together. We're married. We, we walk together. We walk together. But if we go into a dark place or a dangerous place, I get in front of her. But if, it's, if, if everything is safe and secure, we walk side by side. But mercy never walks side by side with grace because he comes to establish some things. Good God of mine. Let me see if I can make establish right. Uh, when I was a small child living in northern Arizona, it would snow two or three feet at a time. And I would want to go outside with my father. And if my father was going somewhere, he would walk in front of me and tell me to stay behind him. And as he walked, he would clear the way for me. Mercy comes to mercy comes to clear the way so grace can come in. Oh, y'all. Y'all not getting, y'all not getting, y'all not getting, y'all I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. And so, so mercy and grace don't walk side by side. Mercy has to walk in front of grace. Why is that, Pastor Colley? Let me jump ahead. I don't have time. Let me jump ahead. We understand the attributes of God. God is love. And we're mesmerized by the love of God. But God is also just. All right. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And if you give grace. Before you give mercy, you violate justice. Oh, my God. Mercy comes to clear the way that that grace can come in. God is just. They call him the righteous just. The righteous judge. He is just. And you can't violate justice. So mercy has to come in. Mercy has to come in and deal with the justice piece. And that's what I want to talk about today because mercy comes and shows up and he does some things. Isaiah, the most poignant chapter about our Christ's crucifixion, his ministry, his, 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 his crucifixion, his resurrection, and his exaltation. All in Isaiah 53. We love to tell the story in the New Testament. But Isaiah pulls back and shows you the mind of God concerning this. And so today when we look at it, let me, let me, let me, let me move, let me move, let me move. The day when we look at it, I want you to experience what Isaiah is saying to us. He is saying to us, Isaiah shows us. That when Jesus Christ showed up, he showed up as mercy. Jesus. He put on the garment of mercy. And when he put on the garment of mercy, Isaiah says in, in 53 that mercy was ugly. Mm, Jesus. Can, can I, can, let me talk to you. Stay, stay with me for just a second and, and I'll come back to, to, to the place where we want to be. Stay with me for just a second. I want to talk about the ugliness. Of mercy. The first thing he says, he says that 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 the ugliness was physical. We we got a lot of pictures hanging on the wall of Jesus, and his hair is flowing, his his his, his skin is smooth, and he's straight and strong. Even when we see him in the garden praying, we make a whole lot of line print pictures. We got a pictures that lie, but the Bible says that he shall grow up uh, from a tender plant. Out of a root, out of dry ground. He said there'll be no form of kindliness and, and we shall see him and there's no beauty that we should desire. He says to us two things. He says that when Jesus put on mercy, his body was deformed. And there was nothing about him. There was no sisters that wanted to get with him. Nobody thought he was cute or fine. He was twisted and deformed. Why was he twisted and deformed? Because he put on mercy for us. And mercy is ugly. It's in our bodies. It's in the things that we think. It's in the things that we do. Mercy was ugly, but it showed up. It was ugly, but it shows up to deal with the stain and the pain and the abuse. Mercy is ugly. See, if you receive in mercy, you think it's great. 
you think it's beautiful. But I'm reminded a few years ago when the Emmanuel 9 walked into the courthouse and faced the killer of their families and they gave him mercy. But watch this, when they gave him mercy, they took the weight off of him and put it on them and it was ugly. They had to pay the stain of living without them. Look, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. When you, when you give mercy, you take the ugliness of mercy and put it on yourself. I want you to know that mercy is ugly. It's in your body. It's, it's ugly. It's hard to bear. When you call on the mercy of the court, the criminal has to bear no weight. But the one that was abused take all of the burden on himself. Mercy, first of all, Isaiah says that Jesus put on mercy. And mercy was ugly. Amen. Then he says that mercy was psychological. Look at verse 3. For he was despised and rejected of men. Uh-huh. The result is that he's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. He, he was treated poorly. You, you got to be careful. You got to be careful the way people treat you because it'll mess up your own mind. It'll cause you to toss and turn. Jesus had to accept the abuse from people he had done nothing to. Have you ever had folk mistreat you? They don't know nothing about you. You walk in the room and they start talking about you. They don't like the way you dress. You got to be careful. It's psychological. You walk in a room and everybody get quiet. You think they're talking about you. It's psychological. Logical Jesus had to put on the mess because the people mistreated him. His own people. Let me see if I can bring it home. His own people mistreated him. The more mercy walked around, the more they mistreated him. They mistreated him. The Bible says that it got into his psyche. Got into his his psyche. Yeah. We, we don't we don't read this correctly. It was it was what he suffered. Got into made him a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. People tell you that you're not worth nothing long enough. You'll start believing it. You'll start carrying it. You'll start walking around with it. You'll start sitting on the wall. You'll be afraid to speak up because people will tell you that you're not worth anything. You've never been anything. You're never going to do anything. And you start believing. You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful what you let get on the inside of you. But because he was paying the debt, Jesus absorbed it all. He didn't reject none. He took it all on himself. He took it. I took it. I don't want to point to you because I'm really pointing to him. But can I point to you for just a second? He took that so you can be free enough to stand up and say, God, I thank you. Because I don't have to believe what they say about me. I'm better than what they say. You've got to know that he took it psychologically. And so it was psychological. And, and, and the question is, 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 is why, why, why would men reject mercy? Because we prefer revenge and retaliation. Retaliation. We 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 want to get you back. That's right. That's right. Don't don't lie to me. Look, yeah, I know. Just look straight ahead. But y'all know it's some fuck right now. You thinking about, boy? If you could, if it happened fifty years ago, if I could go back fifty years, I would tell that sap sucker. I would slap him. I would fix him. You got some retaliation down on the inside of you. We don't want mercy because it's ugly. It's hard to bear. We would rather get revenge. But Jesus didn't. He didn't do it. People don't want mercy because to accept mercy, you've got to admit that you're guilty. And we live in a new world today, right? We, 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 we pulled into the parking lot this morning and I was listening to the, to the gospel channel and, and somebody was singing a song, Don't Judge Me. As I got out the car, when I got back, I changed the channel. Because that, 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 that indicates something going on in your head. It says that I want to do what I want to do and I don't want you to say nothing about it. I don't want you to talk to me about it. I want to live as messy as I want to mess to be. And I don't want you to say, don't, don't get that twisted. That has nothing to do with God. God will attract your mess. He'll do it with mercy. But he's got to address it. He's just. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So, so it was physical. 
what Jesus went through. He went through some physical abuse, some psychological abuse. And then, then I think one of the hardest things, it was uh, paradoxical. Look, look, verse 4. Watch this. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Watch this. He, he, he's carrying our stuff. But we still think he ain't about nothing. It's a paradox. I, I, think, I, I think Reverend Thompson said it Friday night. He said, faith ain't coming. He said that God's not coming. Watch this. Mercy's not coming. You're giving mercy to folk who's spitting in your face. Giving mercy to folk who don't care nothing about you. Doing good for folk who's lying on you. Are uh, you helping folk that don't care nothing about you? Any chance they'll get, they'll hurt you. But you're still extending your hand. You're still giving them mercy. You could withdraw. But mercy walks in. Even though we abuse mercy and don't want mercy. Mercy keeps getting up and saying, I'm going to give you another chance. I want to thank God for giving me another chance. And 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 giving me another chance. Is there anybody in here say, God, I thank you for giving me another chance? Thank God for the mercy. I was guilty. I was messed up from the floor. But God still gave me. It's a paradox. It's a paradox. Why would you do it? I'm not caring. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, it's a paradox. You can't get your arms around it. I got to, I got to let you go. You can't get your arms around it. See, we don't think enough about the goodness of God and the mercy of God toward you. can't get your arms around When you think of the mess that you did last night, when you think of how you living at your house, the preacher don't see it, the deacon don't see it, nobody see it. But you know you doing it when you think about you can't get your arms around. God still give you mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mercy came to town. And it was ugly. Jesus, Jesus. It's a psychological abuse. It was a paradox. Yes, sir. Couldn't get our arms around it. Couldn't can't, can't understand it. We come in here and give God a halfway, kind of, sort of, little, I'm conservative type of praise. Yes, sir. Because we don't want to look out of place. Go ahead, preacher. It's a paradox. Go ahead, preacher. After he poured this mercy down for you. I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed when churches start fighting and you look for some saved folk and they all claim they saved. It's a paradox. I don't understand it. When you really understand why he had to suffer like he suffered, it ought to make you straighten up and fly right to him. Ah, he just didn't die. He had to go through the suffering. It's, it's a paradox. It's a paradox. I'm just about done. I'm just about done. Let me get let me get these last couple of points out the way. Let me let me get the, the ugliness was preordained. It was preordained. It had to be. What had to be, Pastor Callie? He had to be betrayed. Jesus. Judas had to betray him. Jesus. I've taught you enough here at Greater Mount Zion. We know what betrayal is. My enemy can't betray me. I know he's my enemy. That's right. That's right. My enemy cannot That's betray me. Right. He can attack me, but he can't betray me. Right. To betray me, you got to be in my heart. Oh, yeah. good God in my heart. You got to be deep down in my heart. You got to be somebody that I have confidence in and I can confide in and that I love. For the betrayal only comes from a close confidant. Jesus had to suffer that 
So the next time you have some betrayal, you're not the only one that's been through this. He already been through it for you. He knows what it feels like. So when you call out to God, he understands what it feels like. He has to be betrayed. He had to be judged unfairly. He had to be marched from the Praetorium to, to the Sanhedrin and, and back to Herod and back to Pilate. He had to be marched through the night. He had to be judged by an unfair judge. When things are not right and they don't judge you right, understand that Jesus had to be, had to be judged unfairly. He had to be rejected by his own people. They had to choose Barabbas over him. They had to beat him. They had to beat him until his own mother wouldn't recognize him. They had to put a crown of thorns on his head and mock him and make fun of him. They had to strip him naked and mock him. They had to nail him to a cross. They had to do that. He had to die on cavalry. It was preordained, this ugliness that he had to carry. Why did he have to carry it? I'm glad that you asked because it was our sin that he had to carry. Our sin was ugly. That's why we get, yeah, 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 yeah. It was because of us. That's why we understand verse 5. He was wounded for our transgression. Transgression means I stepped over the line. I knew what the boundary was, but I stepped over the line. Don't walk on the grass, but I did it anyway. It was a transgression. He was wounded for our iniquity. That iniquity is not an outside thing. There's some filthiness on the inside of me. Oh, I got to stop. I got to stop. See, that's the problem with us. You come and look at me, and you say, that's Pastor Colin. And I look at you, and I say, that's Deacon Flip Lawman. That's just what you know. But good God Almighty, y'all know we got some filthiness down on the inside. I'm really, ooh, I, I'm, I done hollered myself out, but here's the thing. I'm really sick of being around folk who act like they don't have no filthiness, some inequity, some crookedness down on the inside. You think because you don't do what I did, that you don't do what she did, that you better, but God looks at you and your picture is still hanging crooked on the wall. You got to know her. My God today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yes, he had to die like he died to fix all of our mess. He couldn't just come in and lay down. He had to suffer the death because our mess is so foul and so messed up that he had to suffer like he suffered. When you grab that, when you get that, when you have a woe is me spirit. You can really come in and celebrate. You can come and celebrate. The problem is we don't have a woe is me spirit. We come to church like uh, uh, we going to give God a tip. We come to church like he owe us something. We going to give him a little bit of our time. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just take a footnote right here. Y'all, I'm going to come back to the text. That's how come the preachers can close up the churches and saints don't mind watching service when it's comfortable for us. But good God, when you really know that it was God that brought you through, you make a sacrifice to make your way to the house of God. All that laying on the couch and laying in the bed and looking for a while while you watch the ball game, that ain't what you that ain't what you Come back. I'm gonna, I ain't gonna throw no rocks at nobody. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back. Come back. So Jesus, Jesus. His dying. His dying was as valuable as his death. Let me say that again. His dying was as valuable as his death. All of us know that one of these days we're going to pass from here. And if I was to take a vote, all of us want to die in peace. Rested in the bed. Sleep. 
and just go on be with the Lord. Nobody wants to, to die in a fire. Nobody wants to die from a deadly disease where you die in pain. No, nobody wants to be in a horrific crack. Everybody wants peace, but Jesus couldn't avoid it. Jesus. It had to be that you got to suffer and die. No, no other lamb did that. They would take the lamb, just bring him in, cut his throat. That was it. No suffering. A few minutes ago, the lamb was chilling. Yep. Next moment, he's gone. That's right. Not with Jesus. He did it for you. That's right. That's he, right. he did it for us. That's right. And so when we grab that, we understand mercy. He did that because we were guilty. But God can't give us the grace Jesus. until the justice is satisfied. That's right. And mercy came in to satisfy the justice. Now I told you that they walked together. Mercy came to town. They abused mercy. Misused mercy. They lied on mercy. They judged mercy. They captured mercy. And made him walk the Villa del Rosa. That, 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 that's Greek Latin for, for the way of sorrow. They made him walk that thing. They took him to Calvary's Hill place called the skull they took mercy there and they nailed him to a cross they killed mercy there mercy and grace walked together but let me tell you one other thing about mercy mercy don't come to stay mercy only comes to make the way mercy don't come to hang around so they thought they were killing mercy, but they were just in mercy's program. Oh, good God of mine. They were just doing what mercy needed to be done. Mercy showed up and all the cross for her. Mercy showed up and paid the bill for her. Mercy showed up and wiped out the dead for her. Mercy showed up as ugly as it was, as rejected as it was. Mercy died on the cross. They took mercy, good God of mine, and they placed mercy in a bottle tomb. They put a stone over the tomb. They sealed it. Matthew says that there were some guards there. It says early, early on Sunday morning, it sounded like an earthquake that was going on. Something was going on. The Bible said in Matthew 28 that an angel descended from heaven and rolled a stone away and then took a seat. Good God of mine. Took a seat on the stone. It was mercy that suffered. It was mercy that died. It was mercy that abused. It was mercy that was laid in the ground. But it was grace that got up. Ah, God, I thank you. I thank you. It was grace that got up. That was grace that got up. The Bible said, the Bible says in Matthew, it said that Mary Magdalene, they come running to the team, to the tomb, looking for Jesus. The angel that was set on the rock say, I know who you're looking for. But mercy's not here anymore. Grace has gotten up. Come here for a second. Come here and watch this. I thank God for grace. Because I could learn my salvation. He made a way. But I thank God for more than that. I thank God that now when I mess up, when I sin, when I fall down, I hear God saying to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Is it anybody in here that knows that God's grace is sufficient for you? Stand on your feet and give God some praise. Give me a hand. favorite song Thank you, God. that I sing in this place every Sunday morning for Sunday school. That's the only place they let me sing it. <laughs> I sing one song every Sunday. Same song. Oh, but Sanders, that's the only song they let me sing. Song says, Amazing Grace shall always be my song of praise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Oh, it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just how he came to love me so. But it will be on my fault. So it was amazing grace. It was amazing. It's amazing. But grace could not have shown up. Yes, sir. If mercy hadn't established the way. Yes, sir. We take his dying for granted. We acknowledge that he died. We preach around him, don't we? We preach a whole sermon about money, and then on the end, we add a our cart. Then he died. But the reality is, is that when you can get in your spirit, that he went down because of you. And he got up for you. He suffered because of you. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon him. He's born it. He's carried it. And so we celebrate it today. The Bible says, let me give you a New Testament just so you don't leave. The Bible says in Matthew 28 and 18, he says to him, he says, now all power has been given unto me. He's not submitting to anyone anymore. You got the grace of God. You've got the grace of God. I want you to quit just looking for the mercy of God. Thank God for the mercy. Yes, sir. The mercies are new every day. Yes, sir. That says something about you. Yes, sir. That's what that says. It says you wake up guilty of something. Thank God. Mercy comes in, but it don't come to stay. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord. Right where you're standing. Right where you're standing. Precious Father, our God, we acknowledge the awesomeness of who you are. We call you holy. You are holy, holy, holy God. And we can't understand your mercy and your grace toward us. But we want to stand in this place this morning, Father, and say thank you. Lord, thank you for sending mercy to my house. Thank you for sending mercy to my house. Thank you, God, for you open the way for your grace to abide on my life. We're grateful this morning. And Father, we just really want to say thank you for Jesus. Thank you for all that he suffered and all that he did. And God, we thank you, God, that you raised him from the dead. The same spirit of resurrection you put in us. We thank you now. Thank you, Father, for you've always been faithful. You've always been gracious toward us. And Father, while we stand together in this fellowship, I know each and every one of us know someone who is wrestling, struggling, striving to rebalance their lives. Some of it's physical. Some of it's psychological. Some of it's paradoxical. Some of it was just ordained by you. But wherever they may be, Lord, we lift them up before you. And we ask God that your peace, which passes all understanding, would abide with them. And I'm asking God that you would send mercy to their homes. Send mercy to their heart. Send mercy to their lives. And let him establish the way. Lord, I thank you for what you've already done. And Father, I just want to say I hope and I pray that you're pleased with my effort. I pray, God, that the Holy Spirit would do <clears throat> and 
has done what I could not do. Someone under the sound of my voice is waiting to hear you whisper to them. Someone is waiting for you to speak to them. Father, we surrender to your will. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray. All the children of God will say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Amen. Put your hands together. Glory to God. You may be seated in the sanctuary. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to, uh, for those of you that want to stay, I'm, I'm going to expedite. We, uh, uh, my musician has got to leave, so I know you got to go. Uh, uh, but we're going to expedite. We're going to have communion uh, this morning. Amen. And we see uh, Pastor Charles is in the house. Amen. Uh, so I got Pastor Charles from the Rock Church. Amen. He can, uh, he can uh, take over for us for a minute while uh, we transition. We're going to do communion. This is, um, this is the first Sunday. We do it quarterly here now at GMZ. And so I want to welcome all of you that can and will stay for our communion. I'm, what I'm going to do, uh, because I know this is a little different, I'm going to go ahead and do a benediction for this service. And then we're going to have our communion service. Is that okay? And so that means that if you've got to go, if you've got to fled, then I understand you can, you can go. Um, I don't want you to leave without a blessing, a benediction. And then we're going to do our, our communion service. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together now. Thank you, God, for watching over these, your precious ones, and keeping them under the ark of safety. Lord, I know that you're working it out for us. I believe that it's already done. And Father, for those now that have to leave this moment and this place, this hour, I pray that you would give them traveling mercy and grace. Yes, God. Yes, God. And they would arrive at final destinations to find it safe and secure yes, God. as they left it in your hands. It's in the precious name of our Lord and only Savior. In Jesus the Christ we pray. All the children of God will say amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Glory to God. Now let me just give some, some instructions. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we have sealed cups, and so you'll come around and pick up your cup and go back to your seat. So uh, those on my left, right side of the church, those on my left will exit. Uh, the urchins will exit from the rear to the front. You'll come around, pick up your cup, and go to your seat. Those on uh, my right on the left side of the church will, will exit around, pick up your cup, and go back to your seat. Those in the middle can go either way as the rows come. If, you, if you're sitting on this side, Go, go to the right. If you're sitting inside, go to the left. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Come on, uh, Deacon, Deacon Randy and my deaconess. Let's, let's prepare for communion. Scripture reading comes from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 
Starting in verse 23, we find these words. For I received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. It's at this moment, at this time, uh, we go to the Lord in prayer, in our own silent prayer. If there would be any reason that you would think that you can't come to this table, it's not true. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so at this moment in your prayer, you search your heart and ask God to come to, to receive you to the table. Precious Father, we thank you now for this table as it represents your broken body and your shed blood. And on this day, it represents that you, you are risen and that you rule and you super rule. It represents to us that there will be a marriage feast of the Lamb and we will be welcome at the table. And so, Lord, we ask that you would bless these elements as they represent your broken body and your shed blood. Bless this service now. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen, amen. and amen. amen.
Savior was betrayed. He took the cup and the bread. He blessed the bread and then he broke it and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Let us eat together. After they had eaten, he took the cup and he said, This is the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it. The Bible says that after they had eaten and they had drank, they sung a hymn. Any hymn that Pastor Charles won, a verse of it, we're going to pray and then we're going to go. Everybody say Everybody say Everybody say it. If you love him, 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 say it. musician when he was in middle school. Amen. And now he's passed the rock church. Knowing great thing, young people, I, I want to say this, that uh, his church is being renovated. Uh, they're doing construction. Uh, not his church, but the church that he passes. And, and the rock church. And so he'll be here. He's going to be on Saturdays and Sunday evenings. Most Saturdays. So if you drive by on a Saturday, uh, you see cars out here, and you just need a little churchy, Come on in. The Rock Church will be churching right here. Other than that, we'll see you every Sunday right here at the GMZ. Amen? Amen. This is my brother beloved. I thank God for to Pastor Thompson. We thank God for Pastor Thompson. Amen. These two preachers brought the house down. They brought us a word. Amen. And we thank God for them. Amen. Remember this. That mercy and grace walk together. But they don't walk side by side. And if you accept the mercy, grace will show up. Father, we thank you now for this time together. Thank you for all you've shown us, all that you've done. Bless now these your precious ones. Remember my Nika Luis, my Tarali Luis, and my Swartz family. Remember those, God, who are not with us now. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would let mercy walk in, that grace may abide. Now, Father, as we prepare to leave this moment, we pray for traveling mercy and grace that we may arrive at our final destination to find it safe and secure as we left it in your hands. And we pray as always, let the words of my mind, meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, all the saints would say, Amen.
bless you. Happy Resurrection Day. Go in peace.